Hey, little kitty. How's the bacterial infection now? I'm sure antibiotics helped. Well, don't thank me, but the person who discovered these life-saving medicines. Glad you asked. So in today's episode, let us travel back in time to witness the discovery of antibiotics. Zoom in. There are two kinds of illness, viral and bacterial. And antibiotics are the type of medicines used to eliminate bacterial and only bacterial infections. Though today, we might take antibiotics as just another scientific innovation. Believe it or not, it is one of the greatest scientific discoveries of all time. Yes, that's because before the development of antibiotics, people had very few options for treating bacterial infections. They might try to use home remedies or they might rely on the body's own immune system to fight the infection. However, these methods were often inadequate and people often suffered or perished from such infections. But the development of antibiotics revolutionized the treatment of bacterial infections as they provided a way to directly eradicate bacteria or resist their growth. This made it possible to treat a wide range of infections more effectively and has helped to save numerous lives around the world. But what's more interesting is the story of its discovery, which happened by an accident and due to the good observation skills of a Scottish physician scientist named Alexander Fleming who served as a captain in the Army Medical Corps of London during the First World War. Over there, while working in the battlefield hospital, Fleming observed the demise of many of his fellow soldiers, not always from wounds, but from the succeeding infection. Though the doctors were using antiseptics to try to stop infections, unfortunately, it was causing more harm than good. This disturbed Fleming to the core as he began to observe the patients carefully and found the presence of anaerobic bacteria in deep wounds, which increased despite antiseptics. Then after the war was over, he began to do his research to find a solution for this creeping bacterial problem. But despite the best of his efforts, found no success whatsoever. Then in 1928, after a hard day of work in his lab, Fleming, who was not known for careful laboratory organization, placed a Petri dish among the clutter at his desk and left it there next to an open window before leaving for a vacation. Meanwhile, the cold freeze flowing from outside brought a group of mold spores into the lab that settled on the surface of the dish and began to grow there. After a couple of weeks, when Fleming returned, he found a colony of mold growing on the Petri dish he left on the table. When he observed closely, he noticed that around this colony of mold is a zone completely clear of bacteria. This got him curious as he thought, if this fungus can kill bacteria in the Petri dish, then it might eradicate the bacteria present in the wounds too. So he began to separate the mold and identified it as a type of fungus called penicillium. He witnessed that this fungus was secreting a juice to defend itself from the threat surrounding it. He then named the mold juice penicillin on March 7, 1929. Later, a few other scientists discovered Fleming's work and expanded on it. And after much research and experimentation, 
they managed to mass produce injectable penicillin by 1942. That was just in time to help soldiers wounded in World War II. Trivia time! Did you know bacterial pneumonia killed 18% of fallen soldiers in World War I? But in World War II, it killed less than 1% of soldiers. Also, using too many antibiotics can lead to the creation of a superbug, a type of bacteria that is resistant to multiple antibiotics. To know more, please check out our video on the same topic. Hope you learned something vital today. Until next time, it's me, Dr. Binox, zooming out. What are you making, Kitty? Mold juice. Never mind.